zero. Hey, fucking need a bride. Who the hell is she? Telling all them faggots that they can't be free. Throw that cunt in prison. Maybe then she'll see just how much them goddamn homosexuals mean to me. This is Al Goldstein uh, for Midnight Blue. We're with uh, somebody I've long admired, uh, David Allen Coe. But David, I have to ask you the kind of question Tom Snyder always asks me. Where did you go wrong? You're a fucking degenerate. You're, <laughs> you've been a, a, a pimp. You served about 20 to 30 years of your life in prison. You killed a homosexual in prison. You live with six wives. I mean, you are the ultimate degenerate personified. Where did you go wrong? I think, you know, I, was, I went to reform school when I was nine years old, and, and uh, I grew up in, in institutions. So probably my ideals and my values are different than most people, so I believe in realism a lot more than probably they do. My morals are different. You've killed a, you killed a homosexual in prison. What motivated that kind of a violent response? I'm not sure he was a homosexual. Well, I guess he was a homosexual. He wanted to fuck me in my ass. Mm. You know, I mean, it would have been, I might not have killed him if he wanted me to fuck him in his ass, but, you know, there was a different situation. Maybe it was basically because he was trying to force me to do something that I didn't want to do. Why do you think you're so hostile to women? I mean, you, you, you've said several times and you quoted often as saying that, <clears throat> that you love pussy, you hate women. I mean, is it, is, it, is it some hatred you have towards love you didn't get? I mean, how do you, how do you view I it? I think it's because all the women that I've ever met, basically, in my life... I'm, now, I'm growing an awful lot with my relationships with women. Don't get me wrong. When I first got out of prison, it was, hey, cut, hand me that thing, and if you're not fast enough, I'll knock your fucking brains out. And now it's, uh, hey, babe, how about uh, get me a glass of water, will you? And, you know, it's just, it might still seem real harsh to somebody, but to me it's coming a long way. To, and, and I'm talking to women now, but most of the women I come in contact with were waitresses, stupid, ignorant motherfuckers that can't even take an order and write down an order, right? And this is the mentality of the women. I was, I was never around business women. I was never around any woman that could think that had a fucking brain, that had an idea. Now I have been around those kind of women, and I have a lot of friends that are like that. Some of my old ladies are very high in my organization. They design album covers. They make logos. They run the video equipment. And it's, you know, it's a whole... And I'm realizing that there are, you know, there are women, people. You know, it's like... Once again, we go back to people. It's not... I don't say I... All women. I'm Now I say people. There's women. In general, I don't like most anybody, you know, mm. but I like individuals. Right. But, but I don't say I hate all niggers, I hate all women, I hate all faggots, I hate all Jews, or I hate all anything, Cubans, whatever, you know. It's just in general, I don't like people in general because I've been in prison with every kind of motherfucker there is and I, you know, I just don't trust people. There was a book of What Makes Sammy Run. What's your drive? I mean, is, is it to prove to the world that they were full of shit and wrong about you? You're not the scumbag that society said you were? I mean, why are you so aggressive in pursuing yourself as product? It, it's, it's sort of like the Indians selling turquoise jewelry to the white man. You know, these motherfuckers took me. I was just a kid, a nine-year-old kid that had an emotional problem. I was not a criminal. My father was married to a woman who didn't want me. She already had two sons of her own. She wanted my sisters, but not me. Uh, so they took me down to the court and said they couldn't handle me, and they sent me to an institution. They put me in an institution as if I was an animal, a criminal, whatever. And from that point in my life on, I was continuously in one institution after another because I rebelled. I ran away with older boys who stole a car. Then I was a, involved in a car theft. Then it was a crime. Then I was a criminal. Then I was on probation or parole. Then I was out. I stayed out after 11 o'clock. You know, they bust your curfew. They bust your nuts. They send you back to the fucking joint. You know, I got busted for possession of obscene literature. I had two pictures in my wallet of a naked girl. Right? I went to prison for one to seven years. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I did six and a half fucking years for possession of obscene literature and is now not even a crime. I think you're extremely articulate, but I'd much rather you give us a, some actual work now. Give us a couple uh, of songs. Come on, that's what I want to uh, hear. Okay. You, you know the stuff you, that, that, that they would not play in any station that you can do on Carson. Oh, the motorcycle club had a party. And all the young virgins were there. And I found a blonde with a little bit of titties and a pretty yellow ribbon and a hair. And I told her the three biggest lies in the world. The one my daddy first told me. That was the beginning of my sexual life and the end of my fantasies When I said this will only hurt for a little while I'll only put the head of it in I promise that I'll never try to come in your mouth These are the kind of songs that's on the album And then there's another song that says um, you can talk about your lovers and your backdoor pimps. You can talk about them Hollywood fags. If you want to know the baddest motherfucker in the world, then I'm the greatest lover alive. Now, Jackie Onassis was a snuff queen for me before she ever got rich. And it'd take the average man a day and a half just to satisfy that bitch. Now, the Queen of England gave me the key to the whole damn country of France. And it only took me 15 minutes to get into her pants. Well, I fucked them all from coast to coast, cause Mr. That's My Bag. In fact, I'm the only motherfucker in the world that can make Linda Lovelace gag. My dick's a goddamn big, it's just that I know how to use it. And I'll never let no nickel dime whore ever get the chance to abuse it. They can suck it for hours and hours on end, but I'll still be in control. And I won't come till I wanna come, cause that's my jelly roll. Now let me tell you about them women, friend. I've had them try to wear me down. I fucked them bank clerks and barmaids, I even fucked a circus clown. Doctors, lawyers, teachers, nurses, them fat women sure was a drag. I tell you, I'm the only motherfucker in the world that ever made Linda Lovelace gag. fell apart at the seams when he saw me fuck that whore. She sucked my dick, swallowed my nuts, and I still hollered for more. She sucked my asshole, she sucked my toes, she's the suckingest bitch alive. And I made her call up two more cunts, and friend, that ain't no jive. So don't start talking that trash about being some big kind of lover for some movie star with a jag, cause you ain't shit if you can't get Linda Lovelace to gag. Now, I've been sitting here buying you drinks all night, and you've been telling me how you're some kind of great big lover with all them movie stars out in Hollywood. Well, I've been trying to keep this a secret ever since I got out of prison, but I got the biggest dick you ever seen on a white man. In fact, I'm the only motherfucker in the world that ever made in the love lace gag. Maybe we should do a diversified thing of to show the different things. It's like... Um, I don't want to just sing all, you know, the dirty songs. No, no, good, do that. But uh, uh, an example is uh, I started catching all this shit from the from the Mormon Church because I was, you know, I'm a Mormon and I'm telling people I'm Mormon. When they, when you say you're a Mormon, they want you to think Donny Osmond, right? So I started getting all this bullshit, you know, uh, telling people you're a Mormon, you know. So I wrote this song. This is. Uh, if Grandpa was alive right now, ain't telling what he'd have to say. He had 15 wives all living with him when he finally passed away. Though I've just got two now, Mom, that's enough to keep me satisfied. Haven't had a son yet 
But the good Lord knows three of us have tried. And the Pennsylvania dust that we once spoke is bound for God. And the Mormon way of life is almost gone. I but now and then we gather down in Salt Lake City. Raise our voices in a joyful song. We sing, Heavenly Father, Holy Mother, Keeper of our children, Tiller of the land. Take us to the river in a horse and buggy. Give us our salvation, help us make our stand.